We're going to talk about calculating the gravitational force and solving the problem. Okay, so I have this question here. It says, a space probe lands on the surface of a comet. The mass of the probe is about 80 kilograms, and the mass of the comet is about 2 times 10 to the 16 kilograms. Assume that the comet is approximately spherical with a radius of 3 times 10 to the 3 meters. Okay, the position of the comet is negative 300, 0, 0 meters. The position of the probe sitting on its surface is negative 300, 1500, uh, 2600 meters. Okay, what is the approximate gravitational force on the probe by the comet? So we know on the probe, yeah, will be your R2 and this will be R1. Yeah, because yeah, so we could imagine we have the probe here, maybe we could call this the probe. I'm just drawing some random things to represent my probe. And here's my comet. Yeah. That's my comet. So we'll know the probe is R2. We we'll know the comet is R1. They asked, what is the approximate gravitational force on the probe by the comet? So we know the vector is going from the comet to the probe. So that's the relative position vector. Okay. And we asked the calculate gravitational force. Well, we need to know the formula. And we said the gravitational force in this case, on the probe by the comet, yeah, <coughs> on two by one, and you say on, on two by one, that is just equal to negative g, big G, m1, m2, divided by the magnitude of the radius squared times the unit vector, okay? So this is all we're going to plug in. Now, uh, we need to know what we're solving for. And so if that is the case, we know what G is, we know what the two masses is, R, we know what the two masses are, we know what R is, we just don't know what the unit vector is, right? And so, uh, yeah, and so in order for you to solve for the unit vector, okay, you got to take the change in position. So it says the position of a comet is negative 300 in the x direction, and the position of a probe sitting on, the sur on its surface is negative 300, 1500, and 2600. So therefore, the relative position vector of R, R, that is equal to R2 minus R1. Yes. Now, we know what R2 is. Yeah. R2 is a probe. So therefore, this would be negative 300, 1500, 2600 minus negative uh, minus negative 300, 0, 0. So we're taking R2 minus R1 to get the relative position vector R. Okay. So now if I do that, if I take negative 300 plus 300, that will give me 0 in the x direction. Okay. If I take 1500 minus 0 in the y direction, that will give me uh, 1500. Yeah. If I take 2600 minus zero in the z direction, that will just give me 2600. Okay, so there's my r, there's my vector r. Now I need to find the magnitude of this to give me my position vector. Now to give me, to, to give to, in order for me to calculate my unit vector. And so if I take the magnitude of this, it's a Pythagorean theorem. So I take the square root of zero squared plus 1500 squared plus 2600 squared. If I put this in my calculator, you get 1500 squared plus 2600 squared. And I get my magnitude of R to be 1.66. So I'm just going to round it out to that. Now remember these, I forget my units, but this is in meters and this is in meters, okay? So those are my units. So now that I found R, now that I found the magnitude of R and R, I divide them to get my unit vector. So therefore, R hat will be 0, 1500, uh, 2600 meters divided by 300166 meters. Okay. And so my unit vector will be 0 because this divided by 0 is 0. Uh, 1500 divided by 3001.66 that will be 0 0.4997 in the y direction if 
I take 2600 zero, zero, and divide it by 3001.66, I get 0 0.866 in the z direction. So here goes my unit vector, and this is what I plug in. So uh, get in a new piece of paper here. We're going to plug in the numbers. Okay. So now, if I'm looking at this, know the gravitational force on 2 by 1, that's going to equal a negative, what, well, what is G? Remember, we know what G is, it is, it is a constant, okay, we know G to be 6.7 times 10 to the negative, negative 11. And again, we could plug in the the the, um, the units, but again, that's not what we're, not what we're concerned about right now. Okay, so we take G times the mass. It doesn't matter which order we do the mass. So the mass of the probe is eighty. Yeah. So notice is eighty. Notice is eighty times the mass of the comet, which is two times ten to the sixteen. So this would be two times ten to the sixteen. Yeah. And then we know the radius. So we can divide all this by the radius. Well, what is my radius? It's given here. Yeah. With the radius of 3 times 10 to the 3 meters. So I divide that by 3 times 10 to the 3 meters and we square it. Okay. Because all I'm doing is substituting in for this formula, okay? So you could kind of see here, um, we have the negative G, M1, M2, R squared. The only thing left for us to plug in is the unit vector, okay? So this whole thing here is going to be multiplied by my unit vector. This whole thing is going to be multiplied by my unit vector. And what is my unit vector? My unit vector is 0. 0 0.4997 let me squeeze this here this is 0 0.866 okay. so this is how we find all the numbers to just plug in to give us that numerical value okay now this is a vector so be very careful okay so if I plug all this in I get negative 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 times 80 times 2 times 10 to the 16. Yeah. I multiply all those and I divide by 3 times 10 to the 3 squared. Okay. So just taking all this into just not even doing the unit vectors yet, taking all this into consideration, taking all these three numbers, multiplying and dividing by that squared, and I get negative 11.911 yeah, and I just simply distribute this to my unit vector yeah so we know the, the gravitational force on 2 by 1 in this case will be equal to 0 in the x direction yeah. Now I'll take negative 11.9 times the y direction, which is 0 0.4997, and I get negative 5.95. And in the z direction, when I multiply that, I get negative 10.3. And don't remember, you don't forget our units are in newtons. And so in this case, this value will be the gravitational force on the probe by the comet.